There's not one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Ooh, what's up? Welcome into episode number 56 of the Program Guys podcast. My name is Mason Prince, joined with you as always by Mark Hall, Matt Gann, Patrick Kurtzberger, no Ryan Tyson this week. Today is Thursday, February 2nd. Be sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can follow us. We're trying to hit 1,500 subs on our YouTube channel, by the way. It costs you $0 to subscribe to the channel. Helps us out more than you know. Margo, what a, what a champ. Look at her. Margo wants you to subscribe, people. Subscribe for Margo. Also, you can follow us on Twitter, Program Guys with a Z. Our Instagram, Program Guys with a Z. Our Facebook page, Program Guys Podcast. Whoever gets your podcast, that's where you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all of that good stuff. No Ryan this week, fellas. How we doing? How we living? Good. I uh, I came up with a T-shirt idea this week, and I wanted okay. to run it by you guys. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right, because I saw someone last week, and it was really funny. It said "indoorsy." I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but my idea is, can I have a bite of that? Because. <laughs> That's all. I think it's like you ever if you're like Patrick, walking around gonna, your girlfriend Patrick, eating food. I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. I have no idea where you're going with this. I didn't even get the indoorsy thing. No, no, Mason. <laughs> you just you just got there. That's the yeah. thing. <laughs> no, it'd be funny. It'd be a funny t shirt. Like, can I have a bite of that? Like you ever like is Katie like just sitting down having lunch and like you're like, Oh, I could I could have a bite of that and you're like, yeah. can I have a bite of that? Yeah, yeah. It'd be, be funny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Katie, right. Katie taught me this thing that you do when you want a bite of someone's food, but you yeah. don't want to like blatantly ask them. You go, you go, wow, that looks really good. And, See, I, and then the I person goes say, like, the person's like, yeah, it does. And you go, yeah, wow, that looks really good, man. Yeah. And just, just keep saying how good it looks and tell that person goes, do you, do you want a bite? And you go, oh, I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're offering uh, right. So that's a thing that I learned. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Mark doesn't back, like back. it. If you, if you Look, kept doing that to me and like you see I'm just eating and enjoying myself, yeah. the moment we get to the third time you say good, I'm out. I, you're not getting <laughs> any of it. Just ask for a, a bite of it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, are you a food share? Do you share food? No. No, I think it's weird. You think it's weird to share food? Also, I'm like the most single guy, so I would have no idea. What you I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, I mean, hey, you know, yeah, this guy. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> back to the pod. Back to the pod. You back know what to I mean? the back to the pod. Okay, Patrick. So we, I think we have three no's on the shirt. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the shirt's not happening. Let's move on. Let's yeah. Call me. I guess I came into it thinking like, oh, it's a program guy's shirt. That mm-hmm. would be cool. Yeah. Let's let's. We talked about it. Let's make sure we do this, and then. We start with indoorsy, <laughs> and Pat goes, and I thought that was pretty funny. And I'm like, "Whoa, what, <laughs> what, is, like, what are we gonna get here?" <laughs> we should get some program guys T-shirts though. You should you should comment should. if you want a program guys T-shirt. Yeah, comment down below if do you it. want some if you want some gear. We've been talking about it, but it hasn't been like cemented yet. But it'd be really fun, you know, especially with uh, if we have time until the next football season. Get some gear out for the people. If, if mm. we're all a lot of us are there at games you know so it'd be cool to see some gear as often as walking around camp and and if you have ideas for stuff uh, obviously we're crowdsourcing so we're yeah. gonna take it and give you a little bit of credit but not yeah. pay you that's yeah I mean, right it should yeah, go without right. saying i think yeah. it's it, we're, we're a podcast but um yeah let us know if there's anything cool yeah, let us know. Okay, boys, uh, we had an emergency pod yesterday. If you watch on our YouTube channel, uh, we talked about the breakdown of OU's 2023 schedule. In case you didn't know, the Big 12 released the schedule for all – how many teams are there now, 14? There's 14, right? 14 teams in the Big 12. And they released the schedule for all 14 teams. And, uh, yeah, we saw OU's schedule. We talked about it, but – um, if you want, you can go back to the episode yesterday. Uh, it's a quick 15 minute or not very long at all. Knock it out real quick. Come back to us. But I thought it'd be fun. Make some predictions now for OU's 2023 record. Um, I think it'd be interesting. Yeah. Just uh, because I think Matt made the point. Someone made the point. Matt, Pat, Mark, one of you guys. 
made the point that we were very high on the Sooners at this time last year. And we all saw what happened. So I think it'd be fun again to try to make some, not game by game picks, but give us an overall record for the regular season. And then we'll, we'll kind of discuss from there. So Matt, sure. we'll start with you. What, what do you got? Yeah, I was looking over it before the pod. And, you know, last year, uh, all I can think about is when Mark last year was just going down the schedule. He's like, man, I just don't see any losses here. Big 12 title. And we were all thinking the same thing, especially yeah. after the first three yeah. games yes. and playing good against Nebraska. So we learned our lesson very quickly. But looking at the schedule, it is more favorable this year, I think, with the home games and the away games. If I'm going to be realistic, it's still the second year of BB. He's finally getting his first year of recruits and getting those guys. We got DG. At least we know what he can and can't do. We'll see how the offense you know, is different this year under Levy. But really, I just want to see the defense improve. If the defense can improve with the offense, I think looking at the schedule realistically, I'm thinking either ten and two or nine and three. I think there are going to be some slips up, slip ups during the year, especially that last game, the BYU being a trap game before TCU, and I think those could be potentially back to back losses as well. So, and I think Texas always gives us a hard time. So I'm thinking ten or ten and two, nine and three. For the Sooners this season is kind of where I'm shooting for. Definitely high expectations. So let's give you an over let's under see. nine and a half wins. Let's give you an we'll over under nine and a half. So I like that. Um, all right, Pat, what are you what are you thinking? Good. Yeah, I'll keep it pretty simple here. I was thinking I'm I've been in between eight and four and nine and three. Okay. And because what I saw last year, I'm going to lean eight and four. I'm okay. not going to allow myself to give in that we are going to come in and win 10, 11 games this year. Because that'll help my mental health through the next fall if I have my headspace at eight and four. Now, let me tell you this, Patrick. I love you. You're one of my best friends. Yeah. That's a coward mindset. That's a coward oh, I mindset. Love I no, love the banter. You, you have to. Don't go into that. <laughs> I love the banter. You oh, cannot, you cannot go into next year. That is not what OU fans do. We I do know. not go into a season crossing fingers for eight and four. That's not how we love our life. That's why it's, it's, I'm going 10-2, and two, and I think you have one loss before the bye week, one loss after the bye week, and you see where the chips fall from there. That's that's what I think. I was at dinner last night with my family for my fiance's birthday, and my uncle, who works for the Tulsa World, was Happy talking birthday, to me about Katie. OU. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, he was talking to me about the uh, the OU schedule, and he was like, how many wins do you think they got? And I go, I think they go 10-2, and two. and he looked at me baffled. He was like, how in the world do you think that team can go 10-2? and two? I go, well, first of all, they improve, and I'm giving them two losses. One to, let's let's call it Texas. Let's call it Texas, or maybe it's Cincinnati, one of those games. That's before the bye. And then after the bye, you have a tough game at Oklahoma State or a tough game at BYU. I don't think TCU is going to be any good. So you lose one of those two games. So I think a 10 and 2 is realistic. 9 and 3 is probably more conservative, but 10 and 2 sounds sounds very reasonable to me and I would not be upset with that at all because I think 10 and 2 gets you a trip to Arlington. Honestly, I think it does. I Mark? I think it does too, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Oh yeah, just <clears throat> I so I see four losable games. I see four okay. games right now that, hey, we look at the schedule for whatever reason, all of these could be lost. That's at Cincinnati week four for the reasons we talked about yesterday. Go check out yesterday's pod. Texas, obviously, because, look, they're losing a lot, but Texas always has a lot of talent in the wings. Their problem is always development. Let's see what they're doing behind Bijan Robinson, Roshan Johnson, and who ends up playing quarterback, right? There's a lot going on turnover wise in that offense and then the last two games of the year going to Provo Utah that is a different kind of cold in November than mm -hmm. Oklahoma's cold is altitude is different and is yeah. something we don't play with ever yeah. something none of these guys have ever dealt with and TCU at home I, I think that you're right Mason but that was a team that was in the college football playoff final mm -hmm. a week ago two weeks yeah. ago you know yeah. Yeah. Credit where it's due until I see them differently. I'm also going to go 10 and two. 
I think likeliest situation is we go two and two out of those four games in a perfect world, three and one. And we're looking at kind of a dominant season once again for the Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah. Let us know down below in the comments what your over under is set at for the OU victories. If you think they have a loss where you think that loss comes, we read every single one of your comments, guys. We appreciate it as always. Uh, Anything else on the schedule before we move on, guys? We kind of covered it all yesterday. Again, go watch the pod yesterday. That was a quick reaction pod that we that we dropped for you guys about 15 minutes long really easy to knock out on our youtube channel you can check it out right there i'll leave the link down below in the description go ahead and mark one real just question for you guys actually i want to hear what y'all think <laughs> if you take texas out what's the hardest game of the year next year mm. anybody want to go I'm still mm. I'm still thinking. I I just think with the traveling we're going to do from Cincinnati to Texas. And just even one of the preseason games we might not be right. You right. have a home game between there, Pat. Yeah, you're right. Uh it's you're all right. right. Yeah. But still travel. Uh okay, give me BYU as the toughest game. I was gonna say BYU. At yeah. BYU that's- is is a game that scares me. It just does. Weird things happen in Provo, and that's going to be a night game because it always is. It, like BYU has unimagined. They have so many night games. So many. They, they're it's, they, they're yeah. in church until 6 o'clock. They that's, have to. That's fair. Tabernacle. You can't kick until it's late. Yeah, Tabernacle takes a while. Mar- uh, Matt? I'll go the week after. Short week coming out of Utah playing home against TCU, the final ball game, because there might be a lot of implications on that game, potentially. Maybe a Big 12 title spot, maybe further implications as well in the college football playoff if the season goes well. So short week, coming back home, play TCU. It's really those two games at the end that that worry me the most. Yeah, Mark? I said it yesterday, even though I did get the Luke Fickle thing wrong. Sorry, guys. (laughs) I think that we are vastly more talented than Cincinnati, Mm -hmm. but that being the first true road game, I think that's a trap. And BYU. So just to be a little bit different, I'm going to go Cincinnati. Say that's an early test that tests us in a way Nebraska didn't last year. Something yeah. something weird that uh, I, I wanted to get out. I kind of touched on it yesterday, but watch over that SMU game at home the third week, the second week of the season. That's just a weird game to me because SMU is not, not a team you can push around anymore. They're, they got a high-flying offense, man, and they, they can score some points. So you're going to have to score to keep up with them. I think that that's a, that's a game that I'm kind of worried about. And it's funky because like it was scheduled late as a result of the Georgia cancellation. It has vibes of 2021 Tulane to me Mm -hmm. where we should win. We should win pretty easy, but. uh, Or even that Houston game at NRG. Oh God. You know, Mm, yeah. And the same vibe. that receiver. Oh, I can't remember. God, he was he was insane. He was like six four. Yeah. yeah. And, and like and we our had... guys were five eight. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let us know down below in the comments your answer to Mark's question. Mark had a had a good question for the people. So <laughs> in case you didn't know, it was National Signing Day on Wednesday, February 1st. OU didn't make a lot of noise. They signed one guy, Taylor Heim, out of Bethany, Oklahoma. He or he, I guess he's from UConn is what I read, but he, but he played at Bethany. He was a six, he's a six, 490 pound, three-star prospect. Um, he played both sides of the ball. We've talked about it before, but he was a 2022 district four, a two co-player of the year in, in Oklahoma. He had 79 tackles, 11 pass breakups, eight interceptions, uh, over his last two years at Bethany. He was a very, very good player. I believe played quarterback, um, 2,300 quarterback passing yards. safety, wide receiver. Yeah. yeah, 2,300 pass yards, 26 touchdowns, rushed for over 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns. He also caught 20 passes for 287 yards and four scores. So he's a there, stud. He's good. Go ahead, Pat. No, there's no one's highlight reels I like watching more than his. It is exciting. both sides of the ball. And it's yeah. just like, oh, what's he going to do in this one? I it's know. just fun. Yeah, he's he's a good player, man. He's uh he's one to definitely watch. Um exciting, exciting for him to add to the class. Go ahead, anybody else who wanted to touch on that. I'm trying to get OU's final rankings in the consensus right now. 
Well, and I want to get the whole list of PWO guys, but to speak on Taylor a little bit more, man, you watch his highlights. He runs so smoothly and like he gets hit and somehow just sort of kind of pushes them off of him in in every single one of them and then he plays defense and he's just he's so long that let's say he's blitzing there's one in in my mind very immediately that like the quarterback is running to the right to try and score they're like in the red zone and taylor just gets through the line yeah and because he's long enough he's behind him but he's able to reach out and get him there's some speculation about where he actually ends up playing ball because you're six five one ninety with a frame yeah. like Taylor Himes. You could be a receiver. You could be a tight end. You could be a defensive end. You could be an outside linebacker. You could be a cheetah. There's a lot of things they can do with him. And I think one of the most now fun and interesting storylines with the 2023 class is where do they start him out and where does he finish his career? Because That's there's a lot. Big old mold of clay there to play with. Yeah, definitely has the has the frame to, like you said, play multiple different positions. Um, real quick, the two four seven consensus rankings. Here's where they stand right now: number one Alabama, number two Georgia, number three Texas, number four Oklahoma. So OU has the fourth ranked class in the consensus two four seven rankings. They are ahead of Ohio State, LSU, Miami, Oregon, Tennessee, Notre Dame, Clemson, USC some other big name schools that they're ahead of. So really good for Brent Venable's second year at the helm, his first real recruiting class. You could say number four is a fantastic start where I want to get to the preferred walk on guys, but that's just the rankings are based off of the guys who signed and our scholarship players. So I wanted to get that out of the way before we talked about those preferred walk on. So you guys, I, if I were to tell number you, four. Yeah, if I were to tell you they they finished number four in twenty twenty three, what would you what would you have said, Matt? I wouldn't have believed you, especially yeah. after the year that we had. Uh, I agree. Again, it just it just tells agree. you all about what this coaching staff, even through the adversity of what they had to deal with this year, the players are not just bought in to a program they're obviously not a part of right now, but can potentially make some big impacts coming to the team this year. So I think it tells a lot to what this coaching staff has done over the past year, Patrick. Yeah, I wouldn't have believed you either. Uh, I'm super, super stoked about what they've been able to do. I think maybe I would have believed you like, you know, last spring game. I would have been like, yeah, "Yeah, you know, we've got this. We've got a lot of momentum here. But then after the season, no way, you know, but it's been awesome to see, especially and then we'll hit on it. But all these PWOs coming in are Mm -hmm. super exciting. If you would have told me after the Texas game that, hey, if you can just hold on because you'll have the number four class (laughs) at the end of this. I'll, I would say there's zero shot. I, I would say there's no way. After after what that team showed, I'm like how would anyone want to buy in into this? And like Matt said, that's credit to this coaching staff, man. Those guys recruited their butts off all year long, and it paid off. This this class is great. They they are. They're great on paper. It's going to be important to see how this develops because, like Mark alluded to earlier, Texas has talent every single year. And they can never develop it. And we know how important developing talent is because they do it at Alabama. They do it at Georgia. And those are the two best teams in the country every single year. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I also just think it really speaks to the early evaluations that the coaching staff came in and made quickly, right? Mm -hmm. You lock down Jackson Arnold when he's still a four star. You yeah. lock down PJ Adebore when he's a three star. Yeah, that's crazy, right? So I think be on the lookout for the guys that they zero in on early here in the 2024 process because these guys have now shown us they know what they're doing. There yeah. is even if there's not yet proof of concept on the field, which we're all counting on improvement on the field, right? We just went through and and predicted a crap load more victories than we had last year. Even Patrick's conservative ass. Um, And uh, let's see who they want to build this class around, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Hawkins is an early quarterback prospect. There's a ton of dudes on defense. There's a running back, a receiver, a handful of guys, right? And uh, I mean, now we've seen they can do it. Mm -hmm. Now we know what to expect next year. 
Because, yeah, none of us expected that after the Texas game. But now we've seen them do it after a poor season. We're here with the big boys now, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine leaving this to go coaching California. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be us. No. Couldn't be couldn't be us. Uh, let us know down below in the comments what you think of OU's 2023 class as a whole. Are you surprised as an OU fan? Are you are you happy, excited? All that stuff. We read every comment. All right, boys, some preferred walk-on news. So they didn't sign uh, for a scholarship, but their preferred walk-on. So they did sign on National Signing Day, I guess you can say. These are some preferred walk-ons that are coming. It is CJ Compton. I'm just going to name the names, and then you guys can break down any guy you really want to. C.J. Compton, Kaysen Kalmus, Kenny Wormy, Reed DeQuaze, DeQuaze, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, buddy, and Drew Bat. So those are those are some preferred walk-ons that are going to be part of this 2023 class. Exciting to see. Obviously, the guy that I'm most excited to see, Case and Kalmus, just because of the last name. He's Rocky Kalmus' son. If you don't remember who Rocky Kalmus is, won a national title with OU as a linebacker under Brent Venables. He was uh, an All-American. He won a Bed and Eric Award. Or the Lombardi. Bed and Eric or Lombardi. He won one. No, Buckus. 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 Nice. Thank you. He won one of those national awards. He won. Regardless, he was a very, very good defensive player. Um, his son is is a solid player out of Brentwood, Tennessee, 5'11", 192, four-sport athlete, played linebacker in high school. I would expect that to continue, especially when Schmitty can put some weight on him. So that that's a guy I'm excited to to see just because of the last name. And it, I, I loved watching Rocky Calmus as I was growing up. He went to the high school that I went to, so I got to see him play when I was a little kid. So to see his son now, going to play for the Sooners, that's going to be really exciting. Anybody else on the preferred walk-on front? Yeah, the thing that sticks out the most for me is all of these guys are Oklahoma guys, besides <clears throat> Cass and Butt, I mean, obviously, is Oklahoma roots. Yeah. And that just means, hey, let's go grab the guys who we think are good from Oklahoma and develop these roots at these high schools like we talked about last week. Yep. It's just super impressive to see us saying, hey, if you're a good player in Oklahoma and we think we can develop you, we're going to bring you in. And I just love that. The guy who stands out most to me here, though, is Drew Bat, who's an offensive lineman, 6'8", 255. He played uh, eight-man football in Turpin, Oklahoma. Which That's is interesting. interesting. That's like, interesting. It's just kind of weird. But like, if he's 6'8", 255, and an offensive lineman, obviously we're going to bring him in. This guy looks huge compared to Brent Venables in the picture that they took. And I think he's someone we can really, really develop, and he could be one of our star linemen moving forward. Love, Don't take on that. Have y'all seen much about eight man football? I've not. Mm -hmm. Those guys it's becoming more of a thing. Make Those him. guys need to be able to move in space, and <clears throat> so that's just a cool thing with Drew Bad. I, I bet he comes in be able to move pretty well for that size. I'm sorry, Matt. I did not mean to cut you off. No, you're good. I was just going to go the other offensive lineman, C.J. Compton, who is a three-star from Oklahoma offensive lineman himself, 6'6", 290. Again, just another body on the offensive line. I know that's probably one position group that's a little bit up in the air last year. They were pretty solid towards the end of the year. But they're going to have to continue to develop some of those guys, especially who's going to play at center, the tackles. I mean, we're missing some key guys who are moving on to the draft and elsewhere. So uh, just adding more depth to the offensive line, obviously, with Drew Bat and CJ definitely uh, can help Bill Bean Bo moving forward this year. Because you know how he likes to mess with his combinations, never just has one starting offensive unit. He's going to mess around and change the lineups that best fits uh, what OU is looking for. Love it. Did we? Did everybody get a preferred walk on to touch on? Uh, I kind of talked about Pats, but I'm also going to talk about CJ Compton mm -hmm. for a moment. He wouldn't be here if Bill Bedenbo didn't want him here, and that's all I really need from yeah. stuff like this. He's a big ass body that played tackle in high school. You can probably kick him inside to guard at this level, right? You get a three star to walk on. That's not bad at all, man. That's that's how you do it, and that's how you – man, that's how it works out when you build relationships with these kids, and then it gets to the end of the process and they don't have an offer. They still want to come to Oklahoma. Yep. They're Oklahoma kids. Yep. These are guys you should be getting. Just very good to see. Yeah, 
Uh, I want to get to our comment of the week. Did you did you have one, Patrick? Did you pick one no. out? Because I have one in front of me right now. So our commenter of the week this week is going to be Modern Day Caveman. Modern Day Caveman hit us with a few really good points. Want to read his comment? You guys, guys with a Z, shout out to Modern nice. Day Caveman. You guys with a Z, it. keep forgetting Gavin Freeman as a breakout wide receiver. Also, we're not light at linebacker. We're pretty deep. The problem is BV wants to not play freshman and have guys sit on the bench because he feels they're not ready. He needs to realize some players are good to go straight out of high school. If that was true, we never would have known how good Caleb Williams was. As far as Levy, Teddy Lehman said it perfect. He thinks Saban only wants to go after Levy because he doesn't want a high-powered Oklahoma offense coming to the SEC next season. So why not cut the head off of the snake before it can strike? Thank you so much, Modern Day Caveman, for a very in-depth comment. A lot of points you hit on right there. The one that I take the most is the is the comment about the freshman. I agree with you. He needs to be more inclined to give these freshmen especially this 2023 class, some room to grow and get them in games. And if they're the best players, then they should play. If P.J. Atabare is your best defensive end, defensive end or edge rusher, he needs to be in, period, point blank. So I think my thing there is, like, we saw freshmen play last year. Our Mason Thomas played, Jared and Canick played, Gentry Williams played, Jaden Rowe played, Jaden Barnes – or uh, uh, Javante Barnes played. That's a good number of freshmen. Gavin Freeman played. Um, and they played in spurts. I think that's probably what Brent, Brent Venables is most comfortable with. This year is going to be a little bit different, I think, because we have some more very high caliber guys coming in. Maybe PJ doesn't start from day one, but I imagine by week six, coming out of the bye week, he's starting, right? This will be more of a year to check it out, I think, than last year was, because... Yeah. If Jaron Cannon comes in and doesn't know how to play a linebacker, and that's Brent Venable's own words, I don't know why he should be starting over seniors. Or or I guess David Aguebu is the only one he was started over, so senior. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Anybody else? Yeah, the comment about Levy, I mean, it makes sense. But if you're Nick Saban, you can literally have any offensive coordinator – at any point, anywhere in the country. It's funny how, yeah. I'm sure Jeff ahead. Levy's up there in like a top three, top four, but I'm sure he's not really worried about Oklahoma, Texas. I mean, Alabama's going to be prepared each and every single week. They have, what, the most five stars in their class come in? Six yeah. or more, I think, this year. No, they have nine five so, stars. Oh, nine Alabama five has stars. nine well, five stars. Yeah. Blow, blows my mind. So when it comes to picking an offensive coordinator, I think they can ch- just kind of plug and chug. When it comes to that, I don't think they necessarily need Levy, but... Yeah, they isn't it funny? They they didn't get the Washington guy either. Yeah, though. he rejected them. There is something about being at Alabama that guys are not responding to. I don't know what it, you it's got funny. Infinity it's, five stars coming. It's funny how a week can change things. Has anybody heard anything about on the levy no. front about like r- r- last week? It was everywhere about just people talking about it, and now. It feels like we haven't heard anything about it since and, we put out that episode. Like, and, I feel like there's nothing. I hope that's a good thing. Yeah, I know. But I it could be it a bad too. thing. Uh, last point on the comment, though, with Gavin Freeman. We had a lot of plays for Gavin last year, and I thought he did well on a lot of like, those plays that we were made for him. But to Mason, I think you made this point about Drake Stoops in general. Like, if Drake is your best receiver on the field, then your team's not that good at yeah. wide receiver. Yes. And I think the same kind of theme applies to gavin freeman in there like yeah he could break out but he can't if like if he's a top two three guy that's not a that's not a good thing yeah it's a big issue for me and you want him to opinion. break out in a way where he's a gadgety guy that you can yeah. use him in a lot of different ways and create some shots for him stuff like that maybe he has six touchdowns right but he has it on 22 catches yeah that's an awesome gavin freeman season Yep. I'm with you as well. All right. So uh, we appreciate your comments. Like always, comment down below. It'd be our commenter of the week next week. Shout out to Modern Day Caveman, our commenter of the week. Matt Gann, let's circle the wagons, brother. Big basketball game tonight on Wednesday night. We'll know who wins by the time this pod comes out. But go ahead. Let's circle the wagons, brother. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yep. Yeah. OU's men's basketball playing Stillwater yeah. again. Hopefully they can get some redemption. They went to Stillwater, didn't play so good last time. So let's see if they can play 
a little bit better. They lost by 20, I believe 20 plus points the last go around. So we'll know how they play by the end of tonight. Also had a pretty bad loss to TCU on the road just a, few, a week ago. Playing in Fort Worth, TCU is uh, top 15 currently in the nation, so they are a much better team as of late. But even after that loss to TCU, we had the Big 12 SEC Challenge, where a lot of Big 12 teams played SEC opponents. We got <laughs> number two, Alabama. And I've never seen Loyal Noble filled with as many people as it was this past Saturday. It was absolutely rocking, and the Sooners – came out swinging and beat Alabama 20 plus points at home. Fans were rushing the court. I heard it was the loudest it has been the entire season. That is a great win for Porto Moser and this OU men's basketball team after just a really rough start to Big 12 play. So good add to their resume. Not sure if it'll be enough. They got to get some more wins in Big 12 play if they want to get a chance. They got to win tonight. The they they have yeah, to win tonight. Cool. They have yeah, to. they got to win a majority, if not a lot, of the remaining Big 12 games. Yeah. I think uh, Joe Lombardi, the bracketologist guy, I think he's got OU on the first four outs. So not definitely surprised. need to get some big wins down the road if they want to be in. So they are playing OSU tonight, and, off, and they'll also play West Virginia coming up. Men's gym will play Simpson State this week as well, and men's tennis will play a trio of opponents – Drake, Wichita State, and Incarnate Ward this upcoming week. So good luck to the programs coming up. Switching over to the women's side, starting with OU's women's gym. Just another impressive win on the road, playing number nine Denver, beating them by a full point, 198 to uh, 198 and a half to about 197 and a half was the final score. Another top 10 road win, like I said, and they just keep chugging along. They just let nothing phase them. The girls are playing absolutely out of their mind. So they got the fifth best team score in program history, the best score in the nation this season, and the first or the first 198 plus score this season as well. And Reagan Smith earned a perfect 10 on the beam. So I would say that is a sweep of victories for OU's women's gym as they just continue to dominate this season. And they will play a home match against Iowa State coming up. Switching over to OU's women's basketball. Guys, we had some history. I'm not yep. sure if you guys saw it. Thought. Taylor Ro Robertson is now the all-time women's leader in three-point field goals made. She has made over 498 three-pointers. Guys, that that's crazy. That's a lot of threes. If you if you haven't counted, if you can do some quick math in your head, that's a lot of points. So congratulations to her. I actually did see a video that she got a special shout out from her idol, Stephen Curry, sent her a little shout out video for breaking all-time women's record you'd like to see how athletes interact even down to the college sports i know that was big for her seeing that and hopefully she continues to obviously put that record maybe out of reach uh, it is really incredible feat they did fell or fall to iowa state who was a ranked opponent 86 78 it was a close match until the end but then they came a, came back a couple nights later beat tcu 101 to 78 so good bounce back as again, the Big 12 is just a gauntlet on both sides for women and men's. So they just got to continue chugging along. They will play West Virginia as well coming up for the women. And for tennis, coming back a little bit, beating Texas Tech, beating Minnesota in the Indoor Tennis Association Invitational. So that is a tournament that they are currently in. They advance to the Indoor Championship. They will play NC State for the title this week. So that would be a good bounce back for them, especially after a couple disappointing losses to two Big Ten opponents in Michigan and Ohio State. So good bounce back for them as they continue their season. So really great news from really all the programs, especially OU men's basketball. Hopefully they can all continue their success. That is Circle the Wagons. Love it. Thank you so much, Matthew. Appreciate you as always. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Steph Curry actually met Taylor Robertson, yeah. too. Um, yeah, they met at the Thunder game, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. That's at cool. At the Thunder game. Uh, yeah. I mean, Steph Curry wants to meet his idol, I think, is what that really came yeah, down to. Yeah, I think that's, that's what, what it was. tells us, you know. 
who who came further who made the further travel to mm-hmm. go to that right meeting right yeah. he comes from california she goes from norman yeah exactly it's Broad. like it's like when the it's like when the championship teams go to the white house like the president doesn't go to them right. they they go to the president you know they right. they meet them so exactly shout out shout out to taylor that that's really awesome i love watching that that women's basketball team play man they're fun to watch they're jenny baranchik has that program rolling and they're they're fun to watch i i enjoy that let's move on to some nfl talk boys before we get to the nfl playoff standings we can recap a little bit of the afc and nfc championship but the biggest news in the nfl world today tom brady the goat says he's officially for good quote unquote for good retired Hey, whatever you got to say to make Giselle come back, man. Dude, yeah. for real, I I texted the guys this today. They're getting back together in the next year. I can promise. His Instagram post had freaking three photos of her in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude. I did not see that. That's Yes. You've lost. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just him and her, but it was like yeah. their family, the group family photo with Giselle in there, and then there was another one. Of like when he was like younger. And yeah, dude, they're yeah, he's down bad. He's down Bro, bad. Did y'all, did he ain't y'all made see for the, the streets? Comment? Nah. Did y'all see the comment she left? No, she left, she left the comment. Oh my god, what'd she say? Oh, dude, she said, wishing you all the best in this oh. next chapter oh. of your life. Oh, she's done, dude. She's yeah. done. Yeah, done, she's dude. done. Dad, she's done. Wow. You man, you you do this whole fake pretend football season, right? Because you're yeah. broke because you invested it all in crypto and you <laughs> lost your wife from it and you need the cash, right? You're Tom Brady and you can't be broke. You can't be bankrupt. You're Tom huh. Brady. So you play one more year and uh, to do it, you lose your wife and you think it's going to be all good. You're Tom Brady. And you get to the end <laughs> of this season and you look up and no one really needs you, right? Yeah. Like Miami says, no, we're sticking with Tua. And the Raiders are like, eh. And the Niners are like, no, we've got these children. And you don't have a job to go to. So you retire and you think, okay, I'll put all these pictures in here. I'm done messing around with 20-year-olds. I'm going to go get my family back. Wishing you all the best in this next chapter in your life. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, fall from grace. And that's Stop. that's tough. Let, let's just give credit. He is the absolute GOAT. There is no doubt yeah. about it. He is the greatest to ever play the game. I don't think anyone. He I mean, he's got, every, he's, he's got every statistical passing offensive category, passing touchdowns, wins. You yeah. name it, he's got it. And a lot of those maybe never, ever be broken. I think one that really stands out to me and fun trivia, Matt's trivia. Tom Brady has 35 career playoff wins. Does anyone know who's next and how many? Probably Patrick Mahomes and... Jeez, man. No, Patrick Mahomes hasn't even been in the league that long. No, I'd give you... I I mean, Joe Joe Montana's probably got to be the next closest. It's got to be. That's right. That yeah. is that is correct. He's got sixteen. Nice. Yeah, sixteen. 16. <laughs> yeah. That is nineteen games in between. I think that record might hold for the longest. It, it might it might not even be in our lifetime that we ever see that record broken. Look, I love playoff. Wins. I love That's Patrick crazy. Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes ain't touching that record. He he ain't gonna win that many games. He ain't yeah, gonna play think- long enough. He that's won't play long. Enough. You, you gotta play until your forties. You gotta yes. play on a team that's as dominant as that decade of Patriots yes. teams. I mean, that's that's something we might not ever see again. Yeah. Hold on, guys. We'll see. I mean, he's in, he's in done Patrick. the first he's done the last four years. Like he's yeah. there. But just think how many he's games on track. I understand. But he the reason I set him in the first place is because the amount of touchdowns he's thrown in playoff games is almost like it's the second ever. So he's like five or six behind Brady. He's not that far off already, which is crazy. But he will be he will be Tom's records in some areas. That some areas crazy for sure, right? So like uh the in five years of starting, 
the least far Patrick Mahomes has gone is the AFC championship game. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe we give a little bit of credit to the fact that just having Patrick Mahomes is a ticket to the championship game. Mm-hmm. And if he plays long enough, he's going to get to that point. I think, I think he's going to get there. Um, yeah, but it's, the, it becomes a health thing and because yeah. you can't hit quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, the thing is like, I think to catch Brady, he's going to have to play 12 more years. Does he have 12 more? I don't know if he does. If he wants it, right? Maybe he just doesn't want to. Pat, but Quarterbacks but, play but, forever. Yeah, you're right. But Pat relies so much on his mobility and his legs and to get him out of the pocket and rolling out and stuff like that. And that's just something that wasn't Tom's game ever. Just yeah. ever. Yeah. And that's why he was able to last so long. And that's what scares me about Patrick is just – I, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, Does I think he it's become unquestion- the new Ben Roethlisberger? You can't just you can't you know oh, discount no, it, well, right? Oh, no, What's that's... more likely, we get Matt back or Patrick Mahomes <laughs> breaks this record? I, it's hard to know. It's a toss yeah, up. It is hard to know. So another just while we're killing time waiting for Q to get back, uh, Tom Brady has more wins against the spread, so like covering the spread than the Jaguars or the Texans have wins as franchises. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> and it it's not like, me, I mean, like crazy. the Texans came out around the same time, right? So mm-hmm. it made sense. That's true. The Jags have been a thing yeah. since the early 90s. Yeah. That's tough, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think the Jags were 95. I think they were 95 I, or something. Yeah, mid nineties. Yeah, I don't know the year, but I neither do I. I mean, I know they're nineties for sure. I saw a highlight the other day of the Jaguars' like inaugural game, and they like lost or something like that. Um, but jerseys were rad though. They were. They were rad. They were sick. Um, welcome back, Hugh. So Tom Brady retired. Mona Sana. He ruined my. He ruined my football life for like. 18 years so i'm i'm pretty much done like please leave i I can't take it anymore um i respect him but dude he he ruined my life for a long time and the dolphins played him harder than any team he's ever played like i think he was like 24 and 12 against the dolphins all time and in in terms of division games that he's played as easily like the worst record he's had but dude, I felt like we were 30 and five. Like we, I felt like we never beat them. Never. And he made my life miserable because I knew we weren't ever going to have a shot to win a division. And the one year that we did win a division was when he tore his ACL. That's like the only time. So yeah, it was, it was bad. Uh, it was bad. But yeah, Tom Brady, enjoy retirement. I hope you enjoy it. With his retirement, Desmond Ritter is the best quarterback in the NFC South. No one, can, rowdy. no one can disprove no, that. He's not. No, no one can disprove that. Who's better? Matt. Sam Darnold, easily. Matt. I'll take Sam Darnold all day. Dude, what is Desmond Ritter agent approved? this offseason? So I'm just out. saying. Well, he, he, hasn't he hasn't left no, yet. He hasn't left yet. He actually is literally, he cleaned no, he's out a free his agent. and left. He's a, he's yeah, a, free, he's a free agent. agent. He's free. The I, I listened to a Dolphins pod today. They were talking about signing him as a backup. Um, so, I don't know. Andy Dalton's a free agent. Yeah, Jameis is. is not. So Jameis is the one you could really give me some trouble I would, for. I would take Taysom Hill over Desmond Ritter, bro. Shut up, Matt. No, stop. <laughs> stop. Taysom Hill well, is tied in. Oh, and my cute. God. Oh, my God. More NFL things. We haven't even talked about it. Coaches. Oh, Sean yeah. Payton Sean Payton to Sean Denver. Payton. Yeah, Sean Payton to Denver. First and... Uh, third round pick. Third... Yeah, yeah. Uh, first and yeah, yeah, and uh, Pat D'Amico Ryan, D'Amico. The Texans man, that's a great Let's hire. Start there, Pat. I want to hear all your thoughts. I couldn't be happier. I'm surprised we didn't mess this up because we typically always mess everything up. He's got a six year deal, and I hope we give him at least four years there. Like, even if it's a bad four years and we're not progressing, I hope he still gets those four years because we can't just keep turning over coaches and turning over coaches. He is the perfect guy to come in because he's been in Houston. He loves his team. I don't know if he loves the organization because he did sue them, but he is the guy to turn 
the Texans into something. I'm not going to say turn around because we've never, never been there. So there's nothing to turn around, but there is a culture to start and he could start it. And I think he definitely has the ability to, I think the players will love him. I think they'll want to play for him. And that's the biggest thing for me. And I'm really excited for this hire. You want to hear my hot take about, about this? Yeah. And it might not be a hot take. I I love D'Amico Ryan's. He needs to do everything in his power to not marry himself to Bryce Young because that's yes. that's his downfall waiting to happen. They they cannot do that. He, I just don't think Bryce Young's the guy. And if you go out there and you draft him in his first draft and you are automatically tied to that guy, like he's going to, they're going, they're saying he's the face of the franchise. That's the end of D'Amico Ryan's head coaching career in Houston as soon as they do that, in my opinion. I think if the Texans draft a quarterback, it's CJ Stroud. That's sort okay. of my take at this point. Okay. I also my biggest takeaway, I think this is the best coaching hire of the the cycle. Agree. This is better than Sean Payton to Denver. I understand yeah. all the the high and I think we should talk about that one too. But mm-hmm. uh I think this is the best one of the cycle. And I think it's gonna work out if they give him a long runway. Yes. There are reports that Nick Casario has been in the headset talking to his head coaches during games the last two seasons. Mm-hmm. And Lovey Smith and David Cully deal with that. I certainly hope that D'Amico Ryans comes into that locker room with a gravitas and a bit of, hey, I'm actually a Texan. You've been yeah. here a few years. Good for you. I built this thing and Cal McNair over there knows I built this thing. So you're the one on the chopping block. Not me. Get the shit out of my headset. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. Agreed. I I just think that that's, if that's what happens, they're going to be successful. I'm very excited for the, for the Houston Texans there. Rooting so hard for D'Amico Ryans. Matt, anything on the Texans? I think the Texans are in a good spot because they have the most draft capital, a lot of first round picks over the next few years. So even if they don't work out with whatever quarterback they choose, they got a lot of ammunition for D'Amico Ryans to draft the guys that he wants. So it should be a pretty good setup for him. I don't really understand the Sean Payton thing. I don't know if he thinks Russell Wilson's going to be like the old Russell Wilson of old. He probably could be, but the way he looked last year was a complete drop off, contrib- complete meltdown. He is going to be a much better coach than Nathaniel Hackett. You want to see it. I'm just not really sure if the opportunity fits what he's looking for, but there he is. I'm you curious. A lot of capital for him. I'm curious to see what the Broncos look like because, man, they were a dumpster fire before Peyton Manning. And then they got Peyton Manning and, you know, they, they went on their runs. And then since Peyton left, they're just another dumpster fire. I just, I don't know what they got to do to fix it. I have a hard time believing Sean Payton's the guy to fix it. I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, I think they completely, they, they continue to suck. What? I mean, he had what? He had one Super Bowl appearance 15, 17 years ago. Yep. Like, yeah, he won, but he hasn't done anything since then. They went to the playoffs a bunch of times and and didn't make the Super Bowl. Go ahead, Mark. I see you want to say something. Yeah, I'm I'm fidgety over here as the person who who in this squad has yes. lost the most Correct. and the most meaningfully to Sean Payton. As a Falcons fan, he's kind of run my life for my life, mm. and uh, I think the thing that we're underestimating is the fact that there's already a ton of defensive talent on that team, and. Uh, Sean Payton has basically never had a not top 10 offense. He knows what he's coming into with the whole Russell Wilson thing. He also knows he's probably got three or four starting level receivers and a tight end or two that he can play with. And uh, Javante Williams, is that his name? Yeah, the Javante Williams. Really good player. He's going to be unshackled by the Melvin Gordon of it all. And he's going to make an offense that works for this version of Russ. I don't know if that's worth throwing a first round pick, but I can guarantee you now they're going to be second place in the AFC West next season because the Chargers didn't get rid of 
Brandon Staley and bring in a real head coach Mm -hmm. and the Raiders are going to continue to be a dumpster fire. The Broncos are going to be professional, man. They're going to win 10 games next year. I, I, Sean Payton doesn't lose games. Okay. All right. I like it. I like into this and be Sean Payton like apologist, but no, I mean, you, you brought, I mean, you brought all good points to the table. I, I get it. I just, and yeah, he has a, he has, a solid resume of 10, 11 win seasons, 12 win seasons with the saints. A lot of the time, I'm just saying when it comes to nut cutting time, he's, he's had one, one real season where you can look at and be like, yeah, that's it in a 17 year career. I mean, people, I feel like people are trying to make this guy out to be, to be like the heir apparent. Oh, he, he hasn't figured out like Belichick does. I'm like, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. He's got a better resume than Andy Reid did pre Kansas. City. Okay. I'll give you that. There's just, you know, I'll give you just that. things you can look at. That's all. Yeah. That's all. I yeah. I think it's a good hire. It's not a Demeco yeah. Ryan's hire. And the yeah. owners actually agree, but because mm-hmm. they uh, wanted Demeco. Yeah. Uh, all right, boys. So here's where we stand in our NFL pick em, in case you're wondering. I'm in the lead at seven and five, six and oh, for those of you keeping score back home in the last two weeks. Massive, flex. massive flex on flex. Me. flex yeah, on go me. ahead. Mark and Patrick. Tied at six and six, Ryan at five and seven, Matt Gann at three and nine. Matt, yeah. Any uh, any words? I'm just glad I actually don't put money doing this because <laughs> I would be a yeah. very very big sore loser at this point. You yeah. listen, San Francisco goes down. I think it would be a much closer game if Brock Purdy stays yeah. in. Uh, and yeah, then I think sucks. the Bengals got a little bit of uh screwed by the officials and that. Do you? Yeah, that's one that's what I wanted to bring up to the people. Uh, how yeah, do you not so I, I agree with the last call. The pushing out of bounds yeah. is clearly out of bounds. I'm not going to argue that. I think there's just yeah. some questionable calls before that that led to uh, some home cooking for the Chiefs. I think the, they wanted the Chiefs to be in the Super Bowl. So I don't know about that game. But I picked who I picked. I am the loser, and I can't wait to give you guys an in-depth analysis of USC's 2023 recruiting class. And not just surface it. level. I'm going to get yeah. in there nice and deep black. So <laughs> I'll have that. that. I'll love give that. that for you guys, either when you get, if you guys want next week or after the Super Bowl, whenever it is. Sounds so. good. Yeah, Gann, uh, I, do, I do want to so note exciting. that Gan also wanted to change one of his picks to Dallas, so he would be te- two and ten if we let him. Woo. <laughs> Just Woo. a bad look, man. That's, yeah, that's and also tough. the Cincy game went from plus two and a half to two Kansas City. I mean, it was a four point swing. I don't think it would have mattered. Right, we were all there. We all experienced yeah. that. Yeah. yeah um, right. I don't, there might have been some home cooking, but overall, the Bengals just didn't do what they had to do to win that game, and yeah. that's as easy as that. Like. Mahomes wasn't a hundred percent, and that was you could see that. So, in my opinion, I think the Bengals. Should yeah, but out. come on, what I'm, about the play where they they stop the clock because it was running, and they give him an extra third down, and then they call a holding call. I mean, come on, man, this, that's yeah. not home cooking. I don't know who else is paying the rest. It is but ridiculous. Yeah, that was tough, but I mean, yes, you're right. They did do that, but the Bengals ended up stopping them on that drive. So that drive essentially amounted to nothing. All the all the like all the advantages, I guess you can say that they got from the referees ended up being for not because they had to punt the ball away because they couldn't move the ball. So yeah, I guess they got the opportunities, but they didn't do anything with it. The Bengals had no reason to not go in and win that game and just take that game. That should have been a Joe Mixon game. Mm -hmm. That should have been a run the damn ball game yeah. and keep Patrick Mahomes from getting on the field and keeping that leg warm. And I don't know what Zach Taylor was thinking. He's obviously, I mean, look, he's paid much better than me. He knows what he's doing, right? But he didn't know what he was doing with that game and was still in it late in the game. Here's my hot take. Yeah. Joseph, Joseph Osai is a UT guy. There's no love lost here, Right. I think you look at it like basketball and you swallow your whistle a little bit. Obviously, he's not trying to uh, penalty level push Patrick Mahomes or anything like that. That's ridiculous that we have another classic that could possibly go to overtime in the first year with these new overtime rules where a touchdown isn't enough on that first drive. And we're robbed of it because the hit is 
0.4 seconds later than it should be. That's kind of tough to me. I don't like that. I hope that to some degree we look at the timing on these things. And I, I can I can get that and I can accept that. I can also completely understand that people are like, look, you had a foot out of bounds already and yep. you're you're pushing. Totally get it. So yes, I but I can agree with you. It's you have to know the moments, you know, the moment that you're in. You have to understand that's the game. That that essentially was the game. Because right after that they kicked a field goal. And that's that's it. It's so right. It's just, yeah, I know. I, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but I get the call. When it happened, I was like, I mean, yeah, that, that's what it is. I mean, if that, I'm, And if I'm a yeah. Chiefs fan yeah. and I hear me just say that, yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. He hit my quarterback. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, my already hobbled it. quarterback who is running hobbling. for the first time all night. God, Dude. he's really good, man. Yeah, he is. He's really good. It's, yeah, he's really good. Take the over um, on rushing props. Yeah. He's going to run if he needs to. Yeah, in terms of the San Francisco-Philly game, just just sucks to to see, you know, Brock Purdy go down like that. Um, I predicted that Brock would kind of come back down to earth this game. Didn't really think it involved tearing his UCL. But, um, you know, I an, another case to be made for an emergency quarterback situation the, the uh, there are going there are people calling for the NFL to add another active roster spot for an emergency spot for an emergency quarterback so adding you know a third or fourth quarterback whatever it is to your roster on a game day so we don't have a situation like we saw on Sunday which was Christian McCaffrey taking snaps and who else took snaps for them I mean Brock kept taking them really well, they had no, to, but so yeah, Brock, there was some non quarterback so also. Yeah, Brock got Brock got hurt. Then they put in Brock's backup. I can't remember his name. Josh, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson. Thank Josh you. Josh Johnson, NFL Thank journeyman. You. Yeah. So then he got hurt. So then Chris McCaffrey took a couple snacks snaps and someone else did. I think Kyle oh. used check the fullback. I think, think he's listed bang. the number four quarterback or four yeah. shooter. So you know, Harvard grad. Yeah. Could be that. We'll we'll have more on the Super Bowl for you people next week. Um, we'll break down, do break mean, down our thoughts people? on the game. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> so I don't have an answer to that question that doesn't get me in trouble. Yeah, exactly. So uh yeah. Anything anything else on the NFL guys before we move on to our MVP segment? Go Falcons. Yeah, yeah. but it's my MVP, so I might as well just kick yeah, it off. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. Get us started. I'm gonna go with Jalen Hurts. I have the hot take. Mm. We're throwing out a lot of hot takes this week, okay. but I think Jalen Hurts will be the most successful Oklahoma quarterback in the NFL. And I know that there's a lot of people out here with disagree with that, but he can go win a Super Bowl next week. And if he just does that and plays a couple more seasons in the league, he might have already solidified himself. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's hard to root against Jalen Hurts, right? Like it's it's hard. He doesn't really give you a reason to dislike him. He's a very modest guy, doesn't do the trash talking. He's he's just goes out there, he's about ball. And you know, yep. his entire like journeyman how he got here, you know, how can you not root for a guy like that? He took it took advantage of his second chances, took advantage of any chance that he got to show that he deserved to be the guy out there. I I am rooting for the Chiefs just because I have family who are interested in the Chiefs winning. So I will root for the Chiefs, but I wouldn't mind seeing Jalen Hurst do very, very well. Agreed. Mark? <laughs> Go Eagles. Um, imagine. Imagine. Anyway, uh, so mine is going to be Pedro Pascal because... We started The Last of Us yesterday, and I, you know, I know it's going to be great, right? Everyone has already said it's great, but between, sorry, no, I can't even hear it. Can't even hear oh, it. Oh, you guys can't hear it? No. no. Wow, these mics are great. Anyway, yeah. they're barking a lot. Uh, between uh, now, this one, Game of Thrones, The Mandalorian, and Narcos. Narcos. He is. A very prominent face in four 
big franchises and he owns every one of them in what he does. And uh, I just, I'm very impressed with him in this show. I've been impressed with him in the other shows. He's a different character in Game of Thrones entirely than he is in Narcos, than he is in Mando. Sort of the same in Mando and and Last of Us so far. Yeah. But yeah. that's okay, man. That's all the rage right now is get an old jaded guy and a young, clever person and bring them together. That's the whole, that's the whole story you need. Pedro Pascal, MVP. He's great, man. Love it. Matt? OU football alum, in this Super Bowl, there will be five Sooners that will be in it. That is the most out of any college football team. We had nine in the AFC and NFC championships. It just shows you the pedigree of when Sooners get taken. They last long, and they are very good at what they do. Hence, the left tackles, Lane Williams, Trent, or Lane Johnson, Trent Williams, those guys are all pros and obviously center Creed Humphrey, who after the game, I saw a picture of him have two packs of Michelob Ultras after a AFC championship victory. How could you beat Creed Humphrey, all pro center, incredible, obviously going to the Super Bowl. Wish all the Sooners luck. I wish I could go for one team, but there's multiple Sooners on both. So it should be a really good Super Bowl for the OU alumni Sooners. Love it. Did Mine. Orlando Brown. Orlando Sorry, Brown. and Orlando Brown. Sorry. Yeah. Um, my MVP is Travis Kelsey because when he got on the stage at the end of the game and called out the Cincinnati mayor to tell him to know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni, that's just amazing. I uh, That's something everybody wishes they could do is just be on national television and call someone a jabroni. That's that's sick. Dude, that's I'm, just, dope. I'm so anti-Travis Kelsey. He wants Are so you? badly. He wants there so badly to be popular and famous. Yep. Like He mm-hmm. wants to be Gronkowski. So okay. bad, but he will just never be Gronk because there's only one Gronk. Like if Gronk were still in the league, people would still be talking about Gronk, not Travis. That's just the truth. Like he had to start his podcast. Like he wants he had a reality TV show in like 2016. He just like he, he wants to be famous so bad. And the Gronk is just is, famous because it's just Gronk. The and podcast awesome. is pretty guys, popular. Guys who just start podcasts I hear are like pretty hot. So yeah. no, it's not I get the worst yeah. thing to do. No, I'm also, just saying. Like, I think he really wants attention, like a, a lot, and sure. I'm just not on. That's board. fair. Yeah, I, I, I'm fully in Pat's corner. Are you on Travis Kelsey? Yeah, I know. You would think I like attention. I would be sympathetic <laughs> to someone who really. I'd wants probably be doing attention. the same thing, but like, but like, his is so look at me in a way that. I really can't get on board with, and uh, I don't think he's very funny. The jabroni thing, coolest thing he's ever done. I'll, I'll give him <laughs> okay, that, right. Yeah. That was yeah. that was a little like weird out of the mayor, anyway. Yeah. So fun lashback, right? Yeah. But generally, yeah, I'm anti traffic. I'm pro Jason Kelsey. Jason okay. Kelsey Same. is good on that podcast. If you yeah. haven't paid attention, go. Um, yeah. it, he's good on it. But yeah, Travis Kelsey. It, he wants it too bad that's fair all right that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode episode um, episode number 56 is in the books be sure to like and subscribe on our youtube channel you can follow us on twitter at program guys with z our instagram program guys with z our facebook page program guys podcast however you get your podcast that's where you can find us we will see you all next week for a great number episode 57 but 56 is in the books pat takes out keep pushing it baby